Okay, today we are gonna be talking about tattoo apprenticeships. It's a really important part of tattooing. It's something a lot of you will want to know more information about. And most of the things I see online are either like wrong or just bad advice. Now, in case you're wondering, yes, I had an apprenticeship. It lasted about three years. I have an apprentice. Get your ass over here, Pepe. This is Pepe. <laughs> He's from Argentina. Nice to meet you guys. Don't talk anymore. <laughs> and so I think I have some pretty useful information to give and spout and yada yada. Let's talk about it. I'm a tattoo apprentice and I started practicing on silicone skin about a month ago. So let's just go through everything from the beginning. This is all day one stuff, you know, basic shapes and lines, all that fun stuff. You could tell everything's shaky, but hey. Dude, I just wanna say as an apprentice today, you guys are so lucky that you have all this fake skin to work with and it's pretty cheap. When I was starting to tattoo, we did not have fake skin. Maybe we did, but it was too expensive for me to buy. So I had to use pig skin. Most of the time my mentor would like leave it out and it would get all rotten and gross and it was just a nasty experience. I truly did not learn anything from it except that sometimes it's fun to make fun of the apprentice. We all start somewhere so I would just practice on and off a couple days a week a couple for a couple hours just doing whatever. I would make stencils, I would do designs that I wanted. Okay I remembered why I liked this TikTok. It's because they're not giving you any like practical tips on how to do tattooing. This was something I saw and I was just like, this is just like good solid advice for apprentices, which I don't think is happening on TikTok. I think there's a lot of people who are selling you snake oil on TikTok and they're like, well, this is exactly how you would do it. Look, as an apprentice, you just do the damn thing. Listen to your mentor. You don't have to waste your time on these TikTok things. I know that it's not only apprentices and it's a lot of people who are learning at home how to tattoo that are watching these things and trying to take in all the information, but you're not gonna learn how to weld on TikTok, right? You couldn't look at something and be like, what kind of solder do I need? What kind of angle am I gonna, no. You're not gonna learn how to tattoo on TikTok. This is what makes apprenticeships so important. And this was one of the few posts from an apprentice that I actually appreciated. I thought that there was a lot to learn from. I think that there was some information that was cool and it's just like, you know, really basic run of the mill. Now we gotta talk about unpaid apprenticeships. The biggest things and the downfall with that is yes, there are some shops out there that do unpaid apprenticeships, but it's going to be way less invested mm -hmm. in them because they don't have you know they didn't really get anything in return from it so they're going to let you watch them give you a little bit of information but for an unpaid apprenticeship you're going to have to do double the amount on your own than you would for a paid apprenticeship. yeah it's okay so right off the bat i think that that's incorrect absolutely fully incorrect one, it's a rough generalization, and I never really like when these people throw out generalizations when it comes to a really complex thing like individuals and how they're gonna treat their apprentices if it's paid or unpaid. Look, I have an unpaid apprentice. He did not pay me anything to become an apprentice, but that bull works his ass off every single day to pay me back for the work that I put in him. So to say that like I'm not getting anything is complete garbage. I'm getting a lot from having a free apprentice. Now, if I had an apprentice who paid me, which I would have totally been okay with in this particular instance, this dude's from Argentina, he, he's not gonna be spending the same amount of money that I think that other people from places are going to be in order to get an apprentice. And if I did have a paid apprentice, they would be on a different timeline, but that's it. And my apprentice currently knows that we have a timeline that's longer. And not necessarily it's gonna take him longer to tattoo, but I expect him to work at my shop for longer. And that way, through not only the free labor while he's learning how to tattoo, but while he's a tattooer, he is going to be a solid, good tattooer for my shop. That's what I want from him. That's what I'm gonna get from him. And for someone to be like, I'm not getting anything as a shop owner, as a mentor, because they didn't pay me is total garbage. Not only am I getting free labor now, but I'm getting a good tattooer later. Sometimes I think with people, they don't understand what's actually happening with a mentor apprentice situation. Look, 
An apprentice wants to learn how to tattoo. A mentor either wants free labor, a good tattooer, or to get paid. And in some cases, they want all three. That's fine. That's part of the agreement you sign up for. To be clear, you need to understand what you're providing for the apprentice and the mentor. An apprentice, you wanna learn how to tattoo? That part's simple. This is what you have to give up in order to learn. And I don't necessarily think that if my apprentice paid me, he would get a better experience. He just wouldn't have to be here as long. I would teach him how to tattoo. He could make the decision to leave and become a tattooer somewhere else and do more tattooing, you know, take as much from me as he can during the time frame, and then leave where this apprentice who's not paying me, I expect to be here for a certain amount of time to repay me for what I'm teaching him. It's, it's like you either pay with money or time. Yep. Yeah. 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 And that's like super clear. I mean, that's super honest. Money or time? The paid apprenticeship, you know, it's it's a transaction. Yeah. But uh, yeah, with the unpaid one, it's kind of like, well, you know, you're gonna have to scrub a lot of toilets. Yeah. To uh, yep. to to pay for this this thing. So it's funny because even if you did pay me, I would still make you scrub toilets. I think it's an important part of tattooing. You know, I scrub toilets. I didn't pay for an apprenticeship, but I scrubbed tons of toilets, and I think that like it's a good way to remind yourself that like you are not cooler than anyone else. And in tattooing, we have a lot of dudes who think that they're super cool just because they could lay down a tattoo. And I love the idea of like, we all start from the bottom, we all start scrubbing toilets, and it's part of the apprenticeship no matter what. Shop hands, scrub toilets all day long. The cleaning ladies that you have come in on every two days, if you have a nice shop, they scrub toilets, so why can't an apprentice, even if they paid, scrub some damn toilets, dude? Build some character in these fools. Me personally, having done gone the route of paying with time, it's rough. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd take money any day. Yeah. I would way rather. I didn't pay for an apprenticeship. I would gladly pay in time. I was like super young, had tons of time, did not have tons of money. So. For a lot of kids who are young and like fresh out of high school, dude, pay with time, bros. You don't need to spend the money if you got a good place to learn how to tattoo. I don't agree with that at all. Okay. What? Hey, we just passed 4,000 subscribers. Please hit that subscribe button. We're trying to make it to 10. I appreciate you so much. What people think a tattoo apprenticeship is like. Yeah, so you're gonna take your brush and you're gonna go up and down, up and down. Good, dude. Good job. Yeah. The reality. Do it! Bathroom! There you go, my dudes. Gotta clean some toilets. Just part of it. I, I forgot I even put this one in here. Yeah. Clean some damn toilets, dudes. Here's the biggest mistake that beginner tattoo artists make, and if you can do this one thing, it will separate you from 70% of the artists. Not studying your piece before doing it. My suggestions are print out your piece, redraw it on paper, or tattoo it on face skin. Okay, so he said this is good advice for young tattooers. I think this is just good advice for apprentices in general and young tattooers. Do whatever you're about to tattoo on someone 10 times, either in painting or on fake skin before you do the tattoo. Now I'm sure if you have a good mentor, he's gonna be telling you to do that anyways. But the more you become familiar with what you're about to tattoo, the better the chances are that when you go to do the tattoo, it's gonna be real simple, just color by numbers. And when you're beginning to tattoo, that's how you want it. You want it as simple and as easy as possible. And that's how you do it. You paint the same damn rose 10 times, you tattoo the rose 10 times on fake skin, and then when you go on your client, you're not gonna fuck up the tattoo too bad. Just good advice all around. Yeah, dudes, when you wanna be an apprentice, you need to figure out your financial situation. Most of my apprenticeship, I was a shop hand and I was working seven days a week. I mean, for two years, three years, I was just doing everything I could to learn how to be a tattooer. And I just think that is kind of part of the game, you know? You're young. Most of your peers are gonna be in college and doing the same stuff, but with degrees and things, with a little bit more certainty, honestly. But as an apprentice, like, you need to figure out your financial situation and try and keep things as low 
as possible. If you can live with your parents, live with your parents. If you have to move out, find a cheap little place to rent, find a room to rent, do whatever you have to to survive, but you're gonna probably need two jobs and you're gonna be not getting a lot of sleep and you're gonna be pretty beat up. No social life, yada yada. Yeah, I mean like there's a lot in tattooing to learn and if you have a good mentor, he's gonna like space things out. You don't wanna be thrown into it all at once. You really need a mentor to like kind of have a game plan. I know that before I had an apprentice, I really thought about like what the procedure would be like and what the kind of scheduling would be like, at least in my own head of where I wanted him to be before he was tattooing. If we would have just started at ground zero and been like, okay, you do a tattoo this day, it would just be overwhelming and just not that useful of an apprentice apprenticeship. My goal has always been, if I'm gonna have an apprentice, I want him to be a better tattooer than me someday. That's my goal. If I don't achieve that, if I don't make a better tattooer than myself, I don't see the point in it. And I want to give him the biggest leg up between when he starts and when he leaves my shop for good to become the best tattooer that he possibly can. In order to do that, there's a lot of legwork on my end where I just have to like have these things in place and an idea of what's gonna make him the best tattooer while I have him. So yeah, like there is a ton to learn. And if your mentor is not doing a good job, then you need to do the good job. You need to put in the work somewhere else. You need to put in the learning wherever you can. Ask people around you, ask questions, do whatever you can do to get there. Now I had a great mentor, he had a great mentor, and yada, yada, yada down the line. But my mentor at the time had a lot going on. And there was a lot of things that I had to take from other people and from being in the tattoo shop rather than from my mentor. In fact, I would say that my mentor, although loved the guy, did a great job, did not do the best in this area of like preparing himself. And I don't think he could have. It was a busy time for him. I'm not hating. I'm just saying, like, if your mentor is not doing what he needs or she needs to lay down the groundwork, then you need to step up as an apprentice and really be like, this is my life. I got to take control here when I got the control. So yeah, lots to learn and it is a hard process, bros and brosettes. This TikTok pretty much breaks down exactly how I feel as a mentor. Like, love my, love my apprentice. But almost every time I see him, I want to punch him. It's just, it's so funny. I never thought I'd feel this way about apprentice. And I like the guy. Like, he's sitting right there. He's fine. He's a good dude. Love him. Enjoy him. But it is a difficult job to take on. Like mentors, I don't think get any credit in any of these like TikToks because it's a hard job to care about someone as much as uh, you care about like anything else is a difficult thing. And trying to do the best for them, even though the apprentices are consistently driving you nuts and doing probably the exact opposite of what uh, you're asking them to do will drive you crazy. And I totally get it. As an apprentice, I was getting told one thing and totally messing up the next. Like it is a hard job as an apprentice to learn something consistently and trying to put it into work while you're cleaning toilets, while you're taking care of customers, while you're answering phones, while you're doing all that stuff. I get it. It's a hard job for both people. But yeah, I never expected as a mentor to be like, I could punch him today. I could totally do that. But yeah, it happens all the time. And I think that for a lot of people, they see the relationship of mentor or apprentice and they're like, well, that might be abusive. And I'd be like, yeah, well, when you're a mentor, let me know how you feel about it consistently. Like if you're super happy all the time, hey, good on you. I appreciate you. But it's not an easy task. I don't have kids, but I would imagine it's like having your own kid every once in a while. Sometimes you just want to trip them down some stairs. So this is gonna be a video on tips to get a tattoo apprenticeship. First and foremost, you are not too old. I am 22 years old and I got my apprenticeship this year. Okay, you're not too old. First off, I hate to deter some people from approaching tattooing when they're kind of older, but it is a very hard thing to do when you're a little bit older. 
Personally, the golden era is like 19 to 24. If you can start learning in that range, you're in the best place. If you're older than that, typically you have responsibilities that make the whole financial part of it difficult, but there's nothing else other than that. I don't think that an older person can't learn how to tattoo. And in fact, some of my favorite tattooers started tattooing in their like mid thirties. So I'm not saying you're too old to tattoo, but it is something to consider hey, this is a financial commitment, it's a pain in the ass, the things I'm gonna have to do, the way I'm gonna have to do, go about it, and is it something that's gonna be rewarding in the end? For a lot of people, it's probably not. For some people, absolutely. Next up, just because a shop doesn't post about wanting an apprentice doesn't mean that they won't hire you if you go in there. Don't apply to shops as shop assistants because tattoo shops look specifically for people who don't want to be the, in the tattoo industry for those positions. I don't agree with that at all. I think that like, if you really want to get in the door at a shop that you love, be a shop hand all day forever and try and get in that way. I've never worked at a single shop and I've worked at quite a few that if you came in being like, I want to be an apprentice, not a single time has that worked at any shop I've worked at. And I've worked at seven different tattoo shops. Keep in mind, like the people and the area that I tattoo are in, Southern California. This might be different in different areas. Absolutely, I think things change from place to place, from like tattoo culture, community type of things, place to place. If you're in Canada, maybe it's a different process, but if you're in Southern California, and if you're just like in general, so enthusiastic about tattoos, go work at a shop. Go find out what it's like to actually even be in a shop. And hopefully, if you really love the people you work with, that they really love you, you might end up being a tattooer. Now, you might end up just being a shop hand for the next five years, but maybe don't let that happen if you wanna be a tattooer. Maybe if you're like, hey, I've been at this spot for this long, I have zero opportunity here, I'm gonna to have to move on, move on. But at least during that time, you're understanding, you're learning, you're finding out things about tattooing and you can move it on to the next place. I know of a guy who was a shop hand for two, three years, couldn't find an apprenticeship at the shop he was working at and that shop that he was working at actively helped to find him an apprenticeship elsewhere. So get in the community however you can. And don't listen to that garbage because that's just dumb. So it says, a mistake I would never make again as a tattoo artist. Paying a studio 50% of my money. Okay, so I think I put this in here so I could break down some things about tattooing and the way shops are run because I, I just don't think most people like think about tattooing as a business. They think of it as like an art form, which is great. It's perfect, amazing. It's not gonna get you anywhere in tattooing, especially if you're talking about subjects like money. Look, this is a business. It costs money to keep the lights on, to keep the rent going, to get water in here, to have shop people to clean and blah, 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 blah. There's plenty of scenarios where 50% of your earnings deserves to go to the tattoo shop you're working at. If you work at a super busy walk-in shop and 90% of your clients are walk-ins, that shop deserves 50%. This is why, because those clients are not getting tattooed because they love you. They're getting tattooed because they found the shop. And because of that, the shop deserves a bigger cut than where if you were at a private studio and all of your clients are coming in because they love what you're doing, then maybe your cut deserves to be much bigger. But, None of this is that important, especially if you're an apprentice, you're like, what is he even talking about in cuts? What I do want you to bring home to you is that this is a business. No matter how you swing it, this is a business and you need to start thinking about it in those terms because as apprentices, I think we kind of have this like, oh, it's this fairy tale type of life thing. We just like make tattoos and it's such a good time. And it's like, yes, but at the head of that ship, for you to be able to do what you wanna do, there's a person who's like not getting much sleep, trying to keep a building and a business that's not that profitable in most cases alive. So if you're an apprentice, find out how you can help that person as much as you can, because that's gonna be the best way to find and secure an apprenticeship. 
Now, if that guy sucks or that girl sucks, keep it trucking, dude. Nothing's worse than having a crappy boss in the tattoo world. But if you got a good one, try and help that dude out. And obviously I'm biased because I'm a tattoo shop owner, but I had to explain to my apprentice, like, hey dude, this is a business. I know that you think that this is like fun fairy la la land, but I have to like keep this thing going and your job is to make it as easy for me as possible. And that's why our relationship works so well. There's a couple really easy, obvious red flags. Like lots of them have like a hostile contract. It'll just be like, it's a year contract. It has like a non-compete clause. If they aren't gonna let you start tattooing for at least six months, huge red flag. Wow, that is, wow. I hate that. I hate that. So for someone to say that it's a red flag if you don't have a machine in your hand right away is just crazy bullshit to me. You wanna charge you money? Huge red flag. Don't Again, I know tons of people who have paid lots of money for apprenticeships. They ended up with a great result. So I, I really want to stress this as well. Two things, major takeaways here. One, not all apprenticeships are exactly the same. And it depends on the community and the type of style and the type of place and whatever. This is the norm here and adapt to that because homeboy saying that like, oh, you paying for an apprenticeship, that's a red flag. Well, that might not work at this shop, but it might work at that shop. So that's kind of my one takeaway. Then the second takeaway is this is a business. Find a way that you are contributing to this business. And that's gonna be your best way of finding an apprenticeship. Let's see this last one. Ugh. Apprentices that don't have tattoos. Yeah, I'm not really gonna talk about that one too much. You should have tattoos if you're an apprentice. I don't, I don't know, I don't get it. I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know why it's even a debate or a discussion. If you like tattoos enough that you wanna put them on people, you should like them enough to get them. Plus it's just weird, I don't know. Okay, if you like this video, like and subscribe. I'll see you in a few days.